Early. Early? I always start stream on Friday just a little bit early. Yeah. yeah. But it's not Friday. It's Wednesday. Oh, it's Wednesday. I mean Wednesday. <laughs> Your week just got worse knowing that there's two more days to go or yes. two and a half days to go. Yes. My day did just get worse. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm good. I'm on YouTube and Facebook. I'm going to open up my chat here. Bobo chat. There we go. And where am I? Come on now. You know the service you used to stream to your Facebook and everything at the same time? Yeah. They have a chat thing that pulls. Yeah, I know Restream's got that. It just it's such a because it's still in beta, it doesn't always connect to everything. Yeah, that's true. I've had some mess ups. I've had some I, serious OBS, issues with it. OBS works really well with it, but then yeah, you have to deal with the yeah. OBS. Hey there's Brian Baker. Hey Brian. And we're good. We still have hairspray on the desk. Oh my god! So I thought you didn't use hairspray. I don't. I have it here just for <laughs> for uh, demonstration purposes of what not to do. The cheapest dollar store stuff. That's right. Yeah. Who else we got there? We got Glenn Jones. We got Derek Morris, 3D printing trucker. Whoop whoop. Nice. Yeah, that's uh. We're gonna talk about this today. It's. This was done with the TL smoothers. Yeah, no, that's uh, so is this. pretty serious. There is no echo. Yeah, there's like none. That. The only issue that I had, and I think this is an over extrusion mm -hmm. issue right here, yeah. is on the edge, but that's it. And you can see it fades out by the time it gets to the other is side. Is it a so. Bowden tube or no? Yeah, it's Bowden. That, it could be just, yeah, it's, they're so yeah. hard to time and just that little bit of spring can mess up the corners. Hey, there's Wiley's 3D. Good morning or afternoon, sir. I actually had a little chat with Wiley today. And Mark Baker's at home. Hello again, he says. Yeah, I'm alive. I know you are. I can see it from here, but I'm not getting the notification. I'm alive. I'm alive. But he's not dead yet. And it's not on, like I'm on the page on my phone and I can't see it. Well, sometimes I had that problem too. So. That's weird. I usually get So, we have cake. Cake. Hey, there's David Sell. <clears throat> Priscilla Lawton joined. I don't know if she's allowed. No, she's absolutely allowed. That's my sister-in-law. Oh, yeah. Whose uh, daughter just got married, and I'm so glad that uh, she uh, she had a beautiful wedding. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't be there. Oh. Um, afternoon all, there's Rover. We got was, Minnesota. Why is That's his pretty name cool. got the wrench on it? Because he's a moderator in our group hmm. on the on the stream now. So he can boot people if they're getting unruly and stupid. Or is he a monkey wrench? He's a monkey wrench too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Never have enough. And then we got Jerry's <laughs> projects. There's Jerry Knapp. Are we moderators? How come we don't have Because I haven't set you guys up yet. <laughs> he doesn't trust you. Frankly. <laughs> We've only been doing this for a year. I was only the first one on the show. But, <coughs> now, me. here's the reason why. You have enough to do over there. Oh, no, we um, there's stuff out. Mr. So Mr. Winky Head. I'm not sure what a Mr. Winky Head is, and I'm not sure I want to know. The cake's a lie, Colin says. The cake is not it's a lie. It's a 3D printed cake. It just looks like cake. There you go. We only end up hey, actually, stuff. how come you don't have like a pancake printer and then make layers? Uh, because my wife won't let me buy a pancake printer. Okay, 130. Let's rock. Uh, let's let's run that intro, yeah. Hey, welcome to Coffee with Rich. My name is Richard Cleveland. You guys know who I am. I'm here with you three times a week, yeah. Hey, listen, if this is your first time joining our live stream or watching any of our, our shows on the interwebs, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that little bell notification so you get notified whenever we do a live stream or we go uh, and upload a brand new episode. So today with me, we, we've got a lot of things going on. With me today, of course, is Ben Eady. You guys have met him before. He's been on the show a, a couple of times now, I think. I don't know. Once, maybe Once twice. Once for sure. Once for sure. Ben brought by some stuff. We're going to be talking about Ender 3 upgrades that I made. And I know before you guys start roasting me, <laughs> because I'm the guy who says, don't upgrade your printers. <laughs> I did it for scientific purposes. 
So, <laughs> all right. So let's first start in and we'll say hi to everybody. German printing nerd, I see you there. Um, everybody else I said hi to so far. Colin, yes, pancake printer. He wants me to get a pancake printer. I'm not getting a pancake printer because my wife won't let me. <laughs> what a nice cake you have, my wife says, because she is the lovely woman who baked the cake. And we're going to talk about that Thank before you. the end of the show. And we've got, you know, knives and forks and spoons and plates so we don't have to look like he or Neanderthals. <laughs> yeah, just dig in. <laughs> All right. So Ben brought by some stuff today and uh, we're going to switch seats real quick so Ben can tell you what we got going on. And then we're going to get into Ender 3 stuff. So I'm going to leave you with the whiteboard. I'm going to move that out of the way. Okay. And we're going to switch spots. Just watch this doesn't drop. Actually, how about here? You're there. I'll get through there. <laughs> we'll move your mic over here. Boy, we are really organized today, aren't we? Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to move the mic just a little bit forward uh, because this does make noise. And I'm going to go over your shoulder yeah. so I can switch cameras for you. Yeah. There you go. Okay, we'll just do that. How's that? Okay, so here's what I do. Um, a lot of people talk about gluing prints, and gluing prints works fine, but there are times that it just doesn't glue the way you want it to, especially with PLA. So I just made a couple of little pieces here. Now these have, let's see if I can arrange the angle right, just right, uh, going the wrong way, right there. You'll notice that there's a 45 here, and I just do about half a millimeter or a millimeter or so. Let's move that mic in closer. So we got the little bit of a bevel. You don't have to have this, but then all you do is you get a standard Dremel tool. This is just an off-brand one and some three millimeter filament. So with three millimeter filament, it actually fits into, imagine that, a three millimeter collet. And you get it jammed in so it sticks out a little bit. And you're gonna have this stuff is not gonna be completely straight. So when you start it up, you'll notice it vibrates a little bit. Don't worry too much about that. It's just got to be in there to hold it fairly snug. Now, I'm going to have to do this right-handed, so bear with me. Or maybe, yes, I can do it this way. Hang on. No, let, no, let me just plug you into where you should be plugged in, too. <laughs> oh, wrong one. Well, man, oh, man. <laughs> can we make it in those? Uh, welcome to my world. There we go. Let's put you where you should be. Over here. Hey, we got power bar over there. We got a power bar over here. Yeah. And we got another one right there. I know you guys are going, Richard, get your head out of the way. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you've got the two pieces, you butt them up, and now instead of gluing them, all you do with this is you spin this up. I generally go to about 3,000 RPM or 30,000, I'm not sure what it is, but there's the three on the gauge. Then what you do is you place it down into the crotch of this, uh, these two pieces. You warm it up and then there'll be like a little bit of a pool starting and this is a lot like welding, incredible amount like welding. Once that pool started, you just kind of do a little circular motions and move back and you end up welding the piece. Now you can use 3D print pens, but they don't melt this surface. They only melt the actual filament. So the bond you get isn't that good. This here penetrates right down. And here, just let me show you. So pick up the there and usually the biggest problem here is just getting everything lined up properly. So you get that in there. And once you get it a little globby, in this case I think I made the uh, the fillet maybe a little too deep. But that's good enough to show everybody what's happened here. So I've used up just a little bit of this stuff and granted it's a bit of a pain because you have to always come here and extend that out and then curtain it down and I've got a bunch of little pieces. So I pre-cut a bunch of little pieces about this long. But in the end you end up having a weld like this that looks like a weld. So like if you're doing cosplay or something like that and you play this right it will actually look like a weld. So if you have a weld seam and you do the welding it looks really cool. But at the same time this becomes a very very good joint. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say then. This is sort of like my little trick on joining things because it's, you know, at this point, it's still soft, but uh, it took everything I can. And you'll notice that there is a little bit of penetration in here. Let's go to yeah. there. There's a little bit of penetration there and how this comes apart. So 
in the end you end up having two pieces that are basically fused together not using glue my favorite way of joining two parts together especially if you're doing larger prints where you have different sections that you gotta put together that's really cool just hit the space bar space bar you bet there we go Aha. Oh, we're, we're, we're in different spots you stay right where you are all right we're in different spots now <laughs> okay so when you're welding your plastics together and you can use this with most plastics like uh, ABS, PETG, yeah. and you've tried it with, with all of those, I'm assuming? I haven't tried it with ABS. Actually, honestly, I've only used it with, uh, with uh, PETG. Okay. Um, but to be completely honest, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. I know that ABS, there's a lot of people that use friction welding for ABS in commercial industry, especially auto bodies. So mm -hmm. there's no reason why you can't do it here. It's just a matter of make sure that, you know, you've got a thick wall here. If you have a single layer wall, it's not going to work because you're going to just burn right through the wall. So gotcha. I've got like two or three width, um, two or three layers top, bottom, and side. That way I've got lots of meat to sort of weld into. Now you brought us a couple of other things too. Let's talk about this little tool. This is kind of interesting. Um, it's got a little grinding bit on the end and it has a little motor in it. So tell us a little bit about this tool. So when you're doing uh, just a 3D hit the space print. bar to go to the overhead. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, space bar. Space there bar, you go. There we go. Okay, so this is just a little engraving pen. You can get them at Canadian Tires or Home Depots, Lowe's, you, you name it, you can find them. And all it is is a little rotary pen. When I hit the button, you'll notice this little guy kind of rotates, and it's got like a little burr on the end. What's interesting about this? It's uh, you got. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got something where it's got like some flaws or something in a real tight area where you can't normally get, you just turn this on and you can sand down that little extra. So that little detail sanding you can do. And yes, you can take a Dremel and use that, but this is big and gaudy and awkward. This is a light little tiny pan that you can get in there and do some fine detail and all the sanding that you need. And these things are like 20 bucks, not even it's, one of the coolest little tools I have, and it's just AAA batteries in it. So again, it's super cheap, super handy, great way to sand things down. That's, That's all I got for that one. That is awesome. You know, I my wife convinced me to buy one of those little rotary nail kits, which yeah, kind of yeah. does yeah, the yeah. same yeah. thing, and uh, it works great. Yeah, there you go. Clean up your nails. <laughs> <laughs> but it's if you haven't got one of those little rotary kits and you want something that's easy to get into tight spaces and if you're doing figure models like you guys know I do a lot of figure models so um, if you're doing figure models this is great because now you can get into those nice small tight areas where you couldn't maybe get all of the support material out. Well you can clean behind Richard's ears so oh, yeah. like right in here you can get in there and just get Richard's ears to give you an idea like a little Lego minifigure and you get back into there and clean out that little area if you need to and trying to do that by hands a nightmare so and now over your, <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's okay man as long as you're doing it and i'm not now what is this other thing that you brought us here this looks like a tattoo gun uh, it kind of is um so uh, this is more like ben show and tell day it's Sorry, ben everybody. show and tell day that's all right that's that's why we have ben here so I, I do a fair amount of cosplay stuff at least for friends and neighbors and relatives and also on a show come on um, you have your own batman suit admit it i don't you don't, don't? no but I'm, going, I'm, I'm working on it i've got a cowl going but ah so um the movie predator that's coming out by the way i worked on it i helped do the special effects in that um and i needed something to cut out some models to show the director um and it was always a pain to sit there with a knife and try to cut like a little tiny see a little hole right there that, those kinds of holes are a pain to cut especially with a knife so could I get you to step on that little I will step on the foot puddle if you'll go to the upper camera. Uh, upper camera right there. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, press down. That's good. So this is nothing more than a tattoo gun, but this one will fillet you. The, the needle itself strokes out about six millimeters, but you can do inside cuts really, really quickly, and you can do a lot of outline cuts very fast especially in foam core board but what i end up finding out is that it works just as well in foam rubber and eva foam and with eva foam you can do little cuts like right here where you got a little bevel cut doing that by hand can take forever this just takes a few seconds or you want to you want to put a chamfer along the edge here if you want to hit that you don't even need this on a desk you can just come in and 
go. And it makes for a really nice cut in the end. So this isn't, it's, it's 3D printed, but it's really not a 3D printer thing. It's just a really super handy tool that I was going to show Richard and well, it's being shown to you now. Yes. I like this tool. You know why? Because not only can you uh, go ahead and cut foam core, and you know I've made props and I've made costumes and all that kind of stuff, that this now, when you want that really fine cut, remember a lot of people burn in their detail with yeah. a basically a soldering iron or a wood burning iron. And yeah, this makes no smell whatsoever. Well, a lot of people will take these fillets, they'll take a Dremel tool and they'll sand that off yeah. and they're covered in all that. Been there, done that. that. This just takes it off and you're good to go. You're not breathing any of it. It's that is, quieter. That is very cool. Yeah. And you can also adjust the depth so you can make it so that it only goes like three quarters of the way through the foam. So you can do like breaks or, you know, a little kind of, eh, let's see if we can get there. Do like little depth cuts there. You can see this circle here. That was done just using a stencil template that you can get at any drafting shop or staples. But, you know, try to do an inside cut like that with a razor blade on foam or foam oh. rubber. That never happens. But you'll notice it's not all the way through. So now you hit that with heat, it opens up and it looks like a little feature or a rivet. You like a big rivet, yeah. yeah. Now what I like about this gun the best is that this is all 3D printed. And then you've added the tattoo piece where the ink would normally go. Yeah. Um, and... The wire that you're using here, what type of wire is that? That's guitar wire. So you can grab guitar wires and do that. Um, yeah. You can also go, if you go to their gasket shops, and this is kind of counterintuitive, but gas, the gasket shops have music wire in all sorts of different gauges. And you can buy a one pounder roll, which is like, you know, I have wow. five lifetimes worth of uh, needles that I just, I can cut and bend. The other thing that I do with this too, is that when you cut the needle, you can't see it here. This is like super macro is that you want it to be a sharp so what i ended up doing is, is i got a sharpening stone that i don't care that much about you just put it down on the edge and just come in at an angle and just hit the edge of that and you so it gives it a bit of a point yeah and you yeah, can yeah. just rotate this around and it ends up giving you a nice little point nice um be super careful about this again six millimeters this will like with the right person probably cut your finger off <laughs> they're not safe tools but they're handy as heck so safety first, don't give it to your kids. Yeah. Um, what I liked about doing the foam core is that is such a clean cut. I don't, the camera's not going to pick it up very well. well the back side of that is such a clean cut yeah. that that makes for making details on your costume or on your cosplay pieces so much nicer. Yeah, and here's another thing too, is get um, foam matting, get the interlocking matting you can get from whatever store. Yeah. Place whatever you want to cut on top of it and then you do that. And then this just becomes a, a sacrificial piece, but then you're not worried about depth and you can cut gotcha. everything that you want. You know, that is cool. Nice, nice set down. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I just, now I want one. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> oh, I won't. Let's see what we got for questions. Oh, somebody's off to, to the store. Yeah. I just don't use 27K RPM. Okay. Yes and um, no. It all depends. Oh, it's one to clean up the model. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, if you spin yeah. it up too much, it gets uh, yeah. melty and globby and nightmarish. You don't want that. No. <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk to you guys about the Ender 3. So we're going to switch, switch spots again. You move here, I'll move there. A brief intermission. <laughs> a brief intermission. This is what happens when you do a live show. Yeah. And you've only got so much room in the studio. So let us uh, let me just push that that way and I'll give you this stuff. Because I want to talk a little bit about the upgrades I did to the Ender 3. And you guys know that I am the prophet of don't upgrade. <laughs> don't do it. Don't upgrade because you're just going to muck something up. Well, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Yeah, don't fix it if it ain't broke. That's right. So what I did is I added TL smoothers to the Ender 3 back here. And I also did a couple of 3D printed upgrades to it as well. But I want to talk mostly about the TL smoothers. Now, there's two camps on this right now. TL smoothers, do they work or don't they work? Do they work on the Ender 3 or don't they work? Well, the proof is in the pudding. First, let me dive into a little Mr. Science here. So, what they do is when you see a, a wave sign coming from a TL smoother, it looks like this. It's kind of jagged and has peaks and, and valleys. 
And that's how the, the sign goes. Now, when you add a TL smoother, what that does is it makes it a nice smooth uh, wave sign. So basically what all of this jaggedness is, is noise in the signal that is going to the stepper motor. So that can translate into your print through a couple of things. One is ghosting, and we've talked about ghosting and what that is. Let's say we've got a Y. Well, we're going to see a ghosting image of that Y throughout our print until it finally fades out. The other thing that it does is, is something called salmon skinning. And what salmon skinning is, is it'll start in the center and then it'll kind of work its way out and look like a cross section of a piece of salmon. That doesn't look like a cross section of a piece of salmon though. That's okay. A little bit, yeah, use your imagination there. So. <laughs> The TL smoothers, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples of what I did. Now, you guys may have seen these over the last couple of days on Facebook. Let's start with the cube. This is the X, Y, and Z cube that I did. Um, came out really nice. There are some issues that I'm having with it, and that's right on the corners. And I think that has to do with A, speed, and B is retraction. So there's a little bit of blobbing on the corners where it's starting and stopping. Now... Is there any ghosting? There's no ghosting whatsoever. And this camera would certainly pick it up if there was. There's no ghosting here either. And there's no ghosting on the edges. You know, the corner's working its way in. So that was test number one. I wanted to see how accurate this could get. And in fact, this cube is exactly 60 by 60 by 60. All I did was I took the 20 by 20 XYZ cube, which you can find on Thingiverse, and I just upscaled it to 60 millimeters, so, or 300%. Now, this little canoe, and yes, I'm Canadian, eh? So this is a little canoe, eh? 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 So the canoe has um, many facets on it, but what you're not seeing is that salmon skinning right here. And this is where you would normally see it. And this is a test to see how badly you, your salmon skinning is. So in my opinion, the TL smoothers definitely work. It's a tight fit getting them into the Ender 3's box. Um, but I have four in there. I have one on the X, Y, Z, and the extruder, um, smoothing out the wave signs on all three of them. Now there's some debate as to whether you need them on all four axes or all four stepper drivers. I am going to take a couple of them off. I'm going to see if the salmon skinning still, or the salmon skinning uh, shows up again. If it does, then we will put it back on. Um, and we'll just, we'll try and play around with it. And that's really what this machine is all about right now. It's a, for me to test things so that you guys don't have to spend extra money and then get, end up getting frustrated and emailing me in the middle of the night, which I've gotten a couple. <laughs> I think, Why aren't you responding to me? It's 2 a.m. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, are the plans for the tattoo gun available? Ben is asking. You know, I, yes, they, they will be soon. I've, I've been hesitating putting them out, and the part of the reason why is it's still kind of being developed. Um, in this case, with this group here, um, just knowing that you're probably going to have to adapt the mortar mount, then, yeah, I'll totally put them up online. There's a few places, I think, uh, Replica Prop Forum. If you look up needle saw, needle saw being one word, you'll probably find the uh, the older version of that on there. I'm pretty sure I put the uh, the plans there. But um, in the meantime, yeah, I'll, I'll just work on putting that up there on the uh, Facebook page here shortly. Cool. So what the TL smoothers do for your prints? Well, A, it smooths out the layer lines on your prints, and it smooths out any aberrations that you're going to get. And finally, I put on some dampeners to make it a little quieter. Love the Ender 3. I think it's a great machine. As you guys know, I'm a Creality fanboy. Ever since I got my CR-10S, I've become converted. Now, admittedly, Creality does put out the best of everything. But the Ender 3 is certainly a winner. For the price point, it, you can't beat it. It's a good, sturdy machine, but all you need to do is just give it a couple of little tweaks and tender loving care and then I think it becomes a really great printer. Is there any no, like sub $10,000 printer that you don't need to tweak? Uh, no. Yeah, so no. In, in the end it's kind of part of the game as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, Magic 3D printing. Did you test the smoothers on the Ender 3 with 
the 1.1.2 board or with the 1.1.3 board. I understand the newer board doesn't really need them, but the 1.1.2 does. That actually is a really good question. <laughs> I didn't even notice the number on the board. I think it's the 1.1.3 board that is in this one because it's the latest iteration, so it has the removable flexible build plate. Right now I'm printing something on it, so I can't demonstrate that for you, but you can take it off. Now, talking about that build plate, they could have done a little bit better with that. I think they could have gone to a magnetic bed plate like they are now starting to sell on their website for the Ender 3, the Ender 2, and the CR10 line. Um, but for what it is, you know what? It works, it just seems to work. It's a, it's a plastic substrate, so it's not metal, it's not glass, but it's some sort of flexible plastic, heat resistant plastic that they put on there. And it seems to work. So, TL Smoothers, if you are interested, I did not do any adjusting to the firmware whatsoever. So if you're interested in Teal Smoothers, you know you, where you guys can go to check them out. If you're in the States, you can always order from spool3d.ca. We don't mind. And uh, yeah, we got cake. We're going to dive into cake here right away. Um, the reason that we have cake, and it's all thanks to you guys. There's Stuart Greenlee. Um, it's all thanks to you guys because you helped us get over 2,000 subscribers. And... In my wildest dreams, I never thought that we'd be at 2,000 this early. We're coming up on our one-year anniversary on October 4th. We're going to have a special live stream that day. And uh, we're going to be announcing some new changes that are coming and some great stuff that's going to be happening for you guys as well. Uh, we might even give something away on the 4th. You guys want something? I might give something away. <laughs> yeah. So... My wife, my lovely wife, Geraldine, baked us a homemade, from scratch, chocolate cake with a, not a standard icing, icing sugar. Um, this is a whipped cream icing. Nice. So it's even, it melts in your mouth. So big thumbs up for my wife, everybody. Clap for my wife. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Golf clap. <laughs> so the CR10 S500's printer, I'm not sure what Rover's asking there. Just a statement. Oh, just a statement, okay. <laughs> um, I, I hope I haven't missed any important, important messages. Uh, Magic 3D Printing is asking if you tested the scooters on the Ender 3 with the 1.1. Yeah, I already covered that one. Oh, yeah. I must have been... Stressed. You're daydreaming. Yep. For the giveaway. You should, you should no, get... I... Rover. You give away the the the, uh, the smoothers. The smooth, <laughs> yes. You know what? Maybe we. Yeah. Why don't we do that? We'll give away a pack of four smoothers. Um, that's actually a really good idea. Okay. So there you go. We're gonna have four smoothers to give away on October fourth. Coming up on Friday, we're finally gonna give away the Sunlu 3D pen. We'll be we'll get our winner on Friday. And uh, we will post that on our Facebook page, and we'll go from there. Now, one thing before we dive into cake, I have to do a public apology. And that is because I misreported on something a couple of episodes back when we were talking about the tariffs um, that, the, uh, that the U.S. is imposing on goods uh, from China. And I misreported that uh, protopasta... Um, got their materials overseas. I was under the assumption that they did from the research that I, I had gotten, and that has proven to be wrong. Protopasta, if you're a, a, a buyer of protopasta filaments, 100%, including the raw materials, are made in the U.S. of A. So no China products are coming into that 3D printing filament. So if you are a Protopasta user, continue to support them. They're a great company. They have great smelling <laughs> filament. They have coffee. I've the... never used it. Does it smell like pasta? Does it smell like spaghetti? <laughs> no, but they have one that smells like coffee. What? Whoa, yeah. That would be bad for me, though. I'd be they like... have one that smells like bacon. Oh. Salt. Um, <laughs> Do they use actual bacon? 
Yes, or uh-huh. bacon, or bake not real bacon. Essence of bacon. Uh, essence of bacon. <laughs> so you some print some ba- bacon slices, and it'll be like totally authentic. It's yeah, I guess. <laughs> it kind of bung you up. Um, it, I think. <laughs> Rover just put the giveaway link. Uh, so this is your last few days to enter that uh, contest to get the Sunlu 3D printing pen. Um, thank you very much, Rover, for that. And we are pretty much done for today, unless there's some questions. Jerry, Jerry Knapp says, good wife. Yes. Good wife. Yes, my wife is a great wife. Without her, I would be lost. And you know he's been a good boy in the last week because there's a cake here. There's cake here. <laughs> yes. And we're going to eat it. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Hey, no problem. You're, thank my wife. She's the one who made it. That's a good point. Uh, but I thank you guys for definitely subscribing and sticking with us through all our ups and downs and changes that that uh, are coming in the very near future. Now the changes are good changes, but we're going to save that for a future episode. Coming up on Friday, we are going to continue our troubleshooting series. I know a lot of you guys have liked it so far. Uh, we talked about the nozzle being too close to the bed. Now we're going to talk about the nozzle being too far away from the bed and why that might happen. So and how you can correct it. So we're gonna be talking about that. We're also going to include into that um, warping, because uh, warping is not a very long topic, so I'm gonna include that in Friday's uh, video as well, so you guys can check that out. Um, and now we got a bunch of people to thank. First and foremost, thanking our audience, because they're great people. Thank you to Ben, who came in today and showed off some of his cool stuff. Thanks to Frank, Jess Cornaching, and Brian Baker for all that they do behind the scenes for me. Thanks to my wife who keeps me in line. Bakes cake. Bakes cake. Yep. <laughs> let's, uh, let's also thank our Patreons for their support and their continued support each and every month and it helps us to upgrade things. We need a brand new PC in this studio. Um, so that's what we're working towards now. And uh, it, we're just, we're on the edge of this one f- of dying. This is a uh, first generation i7-920 CPU uh, in this streaming and recording box. So we need, we're desperately in need of an update. Um, now, that being said, thank you again to the Patreons. If you have not yet subscribed to Patreon and you want to help to support the show, you can certainly do that by going to patreon.com slash the first layer. Uh, also, if you're not interested in a monthly commitment, but you want to show your support for the show, um, by helping us out a little bit monetarily. We all drink coffee. Everybody drinks coffee. Well, at least all of us here, because we're not cases, but. <laughs> and that's how we get to calm down, is by drinking coffee. So you can go to buy me a coffee slash the first layer and uh, buy me a coffee if you liked what you, what you saw today and you like what you see in future episodes. Um, what else do I, oh yeah. The guy who gives us this space, I forgot him. Imagine that. Imagine that. He's the guy who supplied the filament for our tests. Um, that's spool3d.ca, as you guys know. Spool3D, print it right, print it with Spool3D. They've got everything you need from printers to filaments to all the parts and accessories, including TL smoothers, that you might need for your next 3D printing project. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool3D. And finally, I've got to thank just me. <laughs> well, how about you thank, thank little Richard? Thank, so yeah, let's thank little Richard. Not, not, not the little Richard, little Richard, that little Richard. This little Richard. little Richard. See, let's see if we can get him a little closer. See, that's a little Lego minifig of me, and it is a minifig. Yep. It's missing my belly, but that's okay. I can 3D print that. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So there's a little minifig of me, which I am going to put right there on the sub, sub, subscribe sign. So remember, if you like the content today, we do these live streams every Wednesday. They're just a little bit of fun. Uh, our series shows, of course, are Monday and uh, Friday. But uh, if you like it, please tell your friends, share, thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, because it all goes into our, our big pot of goodness, and everybody benefits in the end, because then we can make better shows. Put them in the cake. No, I'm not going to put them in the cake. Then I'll eat them. That was like my Lego and my kids have it, and I, I wouldn't trust. I don't know where it's been. <laughs> Rover is reminding me to 
Remember to hit that thumbs up button and thank you. Thank you. So until next time, my friends, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. We'll see you on Friday.